Hello again and welcome back to another How To. I'm your host Charles and we're going to be covering how to make simple beep beep noises on your Apple II. The Apple II has notoriously simple sound based on the fact that it has a one-bit speaker. And by a one-bit speaker that means it's either on or off. And the way to control it through software is to send it a pulse to go on or off. This results in the speaker being able to click and if you click it fast enough you will get a beep. And in this instance, I'm running so that I can do a screen capture on Virtual 2, which does a really good job of emulating the speaker. I'm going to be diving into a little bit of assembly. And if you are intimidated by assembly, like I was before I read Assembly Lines, the Complete Book, a beginner's guide to 6502 programming on the Apple II by Roger Wagner. Uh, it's the collected articles of assembly lines from Soft Talk Magazine and edited by Chris Torrance. I consider it sort of the definitive how to get started with 6502 assembly, mainly because it's how I got started with 6502 assembly. I'm still a bit of a beginner when it comes to assembly code, but what I'm gonna start with today is a very basic how-to on talking to the speaker, doing a couple of loops, and adjusting how fast uh, the speaker clicks. It gives you the control of the tones, and eventually, if people like this and it turns into a series, then we can get to doing things a little more complicated, kind of like this. Or this. Let's start with getting into the mini assembler. And in this emulated Apple IIe, that is going to be a call minus one, five, one. So right now we're looking at the star prompt or the asterisk prompt, and that gives us uh, indication that we're in the monitor now. And with the monitor, I can take a look at any memory location with a address and then the L for list, or we can list a single address just by typing in the address itself. Another thing you can do just right here is you can access memory for things like enunciators and the joystick, the keyboard, probe, all of those things, because all of those various peripherals exist as memory locations to the 6502 and thus to the Apple II. And that includes the speaker and its special location is C030 on a real machine, though it doesn't seem to be doing it on the emulated machine. You will hear a click as the speaker is accessed. Anytime you access the speaker, it will click, which means that all we have to do is access that address in memory fast enough and we can make it beep. So let's go ahead and do that now. And if we list the C030, you might have heard a little bit of a gronk there. And again, this is an enhanced Apple IIe that I'm emulating. So I should be able to get to the mini assembler just with the exclamation mark. And what I will do is at 300, I'm going to do a LDA, which loads the accumulator with whatever is at the address of C030. And then I'm going to jump back to 300. So my very simple program here, two lines of assembly, is all of six bytes. It accesses the speaker and then comes back and does it again. And it'll do that until I hit control reset. And it'll sound pretty ugly, but let's go ahead and do that now. So we enter, go back to the monitor just by hitting enter there. And let's go to 300 and hit G to go instead of L to list. And I should hear control reset. On the emulator, it gave us what sounded like static. I think what in reality, it would have been a very high pitched sound too fast for the emulator to properly emulate. Um, it may not have even been something that you could hear with the human ear. So what we're going to do is modify this so that it has a little bit of something in between. Loading up the speaker click. 
and that's a JSR, that's jumping to the subroutine, FCA8, that is the basic, I say basic, but when I say basic, I mean rudimentary, not basic as in BASIC, the programming language. That is the built-in loop and wait for a little bit subroutine that is built into the Apple II ROM. And it's going to do some strange things because we don't know what the value is that it's coming from the speaker because it's expecting a value to come in from the accumulator to change how long that wait is. So let's see what happens when we do this. So we've loaded the accumulator. We're jumping to the subroutine that is the wait subroutine. And that takes the value from the accumulator and loops a certain number of times based on that value and does nothing. So it's a twiddle your thumbs routine. The next step is, of course, to loop. So we're going to jump JMP back to 300. So let's see what happens when we run this. Sounds a bit like a Geiger counter. And the reason for that is if we go to C030, each time we do, it's going to be a different value because that speaker floats. And if you went to FCA8 in the code, you would see it looking for the accumulator value, which we're loading up with one of these random values here, and that accumulator value will determine how long it waits. So what we'll do this time is go to, starting again at 300, we're going to load the accumulator with a number instead of a memory location, but it's still a hex code, so it means dollar sign, and then 01. Our next step is going to be jumping to the subroutine that is the weight subroutine at FCA8. After that, we will click the speaker, and this time, instead of loading the accumulator with the speaker value, we'll load X, the X register, with C030. That's our speaker click. And then, because this weight subroutine clobbers the accumulator, what we need to do is go back to 300, load it up with one again, and do our loop. So the full loop right now is loading the accumulator with one. We go to our wait command, our, our wait subroutine, click the speaker, and then do that again. And the end result is a very high-pitched whine. Not quite as high or inaudible as the original loop. What we'll do is we'll modify that value here, of loading the accumulator, and see how that affects the tone that we get from our beep. So at 300, we will load the accumulator. And this time, instead of one, what we can do is change it to hex code 10. And then now let's see what the listing looks like now. So again, we're loading the accumulator, but this time with hex 10. Wait, click, loop. So what we'll do is we will loop. As a further example, what we can do is change that from 10 to, let's say, 80. So our listing now looks like this, and we've got 80 as our accumulator value before jumping into the weight subroutine. And let's see how that sounds. So as you can see, adjusting how long it waits between clicks will affect our frequency of the beep. And to break out of this 
loop, I've been hitting reset each time. But let's figure out how to make this beep only a certain length of time, only a certain number of loops. Our listing here is very short and to the point, and all it does is loop to 300 by going to jump. So we need to change that so that it'll only go to 300 a certain number of times. In which case, what we can use is a pretty simple countdown routine using the Y register, since we're already using the accumulator and X. So what we need to do is load up the Y register with something, some value, and we'll use that as the length of our beep. So starting over at 300, since we have such a short routine, we don't need to worry too much about moving things around, but let's start with 300 again. Instead of loading up the accumulator first, let's load up the Y register and let's do 80 again. And then from there, we can do all the same that we had before. So load A. And since 80 was kind of an unpleasant burp sound, Let's make that 20. So the smaller number should mean a higher frequency, so since it's waiting for less time in between clicks. So we're going to JSR to the wait subroutine again. And this time, instead of loading X from the speaker, what we can actually do is store the accumulator at the speaker click, C030. Since it doesn't matter any time we access that memory, either reading or writing, it will click the speaker. And now, instead of jumping back to 300, we are going to decrement Y, which means taking Y and subtracting 1. And since what we want it to do is loop every time the Y register is not zero, what we use is a branch not equal. And what we'll branch not equal to is 302. If we do fall through that branch not equal to the next line, it will be an RTS which is return from subroutine. And since this is the only thing running, this is the only routine, it will essentially be a reset back to the monitor. So to review, we are loading the Y register with the number 80, hex number 80, loading the accumulator with the hex number 20, jumping to our weight, so that should wait for a count of 20. And that's not a direct correlation, number of cycles or number of milliseconds or what have you. But the higher the number here, the longer the wait. And since we have a nice low number, this wait should be short, and so our frequency should be higher. We are then going to click the speaker, decrement Y, which means that 80 will go down to 7F, and then to 7E, 7D, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to zero. And as long as that Y is not zero, we should be going back to 302, which is loading the accumulator with 20, doing the wait and the click. And once that 80 has reduced all the way down to zero, we are RTS, returning from subroutine, which takes us back to the monitor and breaking. So we should have a single beep and then back to the monitor without having to hit reset. So that worked well. And again, what we can do is adjust that value so that our beep is longer or shorter. So if we change that load Y with shorter value, a sh smaller number, we should get 
a shorter beat. And if we change it to a larger number, get a nice long beat. So once again, that's the rudimentary look at how to beat the speaker with a simple loop and calling to the speaker and a ROM routine for waiting. You can control a pretty rudimentary beat. Another fun little trick you can do with the speaker is generate sweeps of various frequencies. So instead of decrementing Y, but keeping the accumulator the same for our weight and thus our frequency, what we can do instead is have that second line there, 302, be a transfer Y to A. And that leaves us with a one byte operation and a little leftover byte here from the load A. So what we'll do is a no op at 303. And then let's take a look at the listing now. So we are loading Y with FF, transferring Y to the accumulator. And then just to fill in the space, added a no op there, which does nothing. Doing our wait command, clicking, decrementing Y, and then returning back to 302, which transfers Y to the accumulator, which then returns through our loop. So each time, not only will our duration, our Y, decrement until eventually it becomes zero, our accumulator will decrement until it becomes zero. And so what that should do is means that our frequency will go from very low to very high over the course of this duration. So let's have a listen. So you can hear it start out very, very slowly, click, 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 until eventually it got to the point where instead of being individual clicks, it was a tone. And then very quickly that tone went higher and higher and higher until eventually it got to the end of the tone and the end of the duration. If you keep playing around with this, hopefully you'll eventually get to the point where you'll get something complicated and want to save it and want to actually use a real assembler instead of just the mini assembler and some shortcuts You'll have routines within routines calling each other and get something that maybe plays music or does some fun pew pew sound effects for a game. These are again just the rudimentary making clicks into beeps. Hopefully that's a good starting point for you towards making your own computer beep. Well that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's how-to and if you do enjoy these and you want to throw something my way you can find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash retroconnector. Thanks to all the patrons there. And if you've enjoyed how-to half as much as I've enjoyed making it, then I've had twice as much fun as you.